Good afternoon, friends. Stephen and Yana Banoon here with Israeli News Live. I look like I just spit as I was talking. So that's probably what I get for picking on Rosa before we come on the air. That's but, right. Uh, but uh, we have two wonderful you reap sisters. What you sow. That's right. You reap I'm what you reaping sow. what I sowed, right? So Amen. We have Dr. Rosa Alvera with us and Sister Connie Haynes, both longtime friends here on Israeli News Live. And uh, we're going to be sharing some amazing insights today with these young ladies. And uh, both of them are past 25. <laughs> you know, you're very nice, Steve. <laughs> it's on camera, right? Wait everybody. till we're off okay, camera. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're of legal age. <laughs> That's right. There we go. They're, they're both of legal age. Here we anyway, go. Anyway, but this is our series of coming out of Zionism to Christ. And these ladies here are Christians for a very long time. In fact, Rosa has a doctorate in theology. So, um, and they have been, uh, of course, Zionist Christians, just like 99% like of Americans. Just like we were. Just like we were. And they want to tell their stories. What inspired them? What, where did they hear the first seed that made them look and say, well, something is wrong. Something is wrong. So let's just do this. Let's go to Sister Connie first. Welcome, Connie. I hope your day is going well. I certainly appreciate that you came with us on. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been a Christian? On October 9th, 1972. Oh, wow. But that, that is that is like 50 years over. Yeah. So we know she's passed 25 two times. <laughs> right. So, and, right. So you, you, as far as, you know, were you aware that you are part of dispensational theology or were you just in church and thinking, well, I'm just a regular Christian and, and it wasn't very natural for you to, uh, to just kind of, believe that the, everything re, revolves, resolves around Israel, everything is, you know, they used to teach in churches that Israel is like a time clock for us, right? That we have to look at Israel to know when Jesus is coming back and all of that. So uh, were you aware that you were a Zionist Christian, that you were dispensational theology? No, I had no idea. I didn't go to those churches. Uh, um, I was, I grew up Catholic, but that's besides the point. Um, when I did get saved, my, the church I belonged to, it was during the hippie days, you know, and we got mm -hmm. the Jesus thing. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is that I have always in my heart had a great love for Jews. I went to, a, you know, my, I was Long Island. So, you know, I went to a high school uh, that and grammar school that was you know Jews and um, a lot you know so there were a lot and uh, but I just had that love in my heart right. and uh, so when I got saved I still um, you know we never I, as far as I can remember I mean yeah I don't it just was there I think I actually found a book uh, at the book Exodus and I read it and that's, and I really, I don't think I even knew about the Holocaust until I read that book. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when, wow, I just went full speed for the Jews. I mean, full blown out. And I, you know, it, it was, I, I, right. You know, that, that gets started me out. So, but, and I did this on my own. Nobody wasn't in the church that in, they didn't talk about, you know, Israel. any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. I, so I, how it, far were you in? Like, like you say, I was like in with the Jews. I mean, I guess, tell, tell us a little bit about that, your love for Israel. And did you travel to Israel ever in your life? Yeah, I did finally in 2013, um, mm -hmm. and uh, was that, it, nice? it was nice, but I still didn't feel anything, you know, I thought I was going to feel something, and and when we finally got to go to the wall, it was like, um, 
you know, after we saw the, you know, the different things, the churches and stuff like that, we went to the wall and I was standing in line and the Israeli soldier was over there, uh, you know, with, with his, you know, gun as we were on the line waiting to get into the Western wall. And I'm going, I'm like hyperventilating. I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And the people that I was around you, and they just, just calm down, you know? And I was so <laughs> in pain is that, uh, you know? Uh, and I went to the wall and I, I, you know, I didn't feel anything. I, you know, I went and prayed and I thought, I, you know, I didn't feel anything. It was, you know, and, and the Jews were there, you know, and they're there. It was on a Friday and it was a special thing. They right. had... They all connected arms and they came out singing. It was supposed to be a very special thing and we weren't allowed to be a partaker of it. And one of the uh, Jewish girls came over. I was had my little camera and I was, turn that camera off, turn that off. You're not allowed to do this. And uh, so, wow. and I said, yeah, it was really weird. But um, but I was so, you know, they were right, always right, always right. Jews, you know, my Facebook page was Israel. I stand with Israel. Uh, no matter where I stand, I stand with Israel. Uh, I was so offensive to the um, Arabs and Palestinians that I, you know, and I always felt some kind of conviction, you know, and wow. when I went to the I was went to the shopping in Israel you know that little uh you know where they have all the shops and yes Jews. yes and um I used to shout out I love you Israel I'd go around all the wherever I was I, and this everybody would turn and look and uh some Palestinian men were at their little shop and they go what about us and wow. I just turned my head and kept walking and I felt terrible you wow. know yeah. sister Connie that's such you know that's such yeah. an yeah. honest story because we were the same way like we we were the oh, same yeah. uh we had of course a Facebook page where it, it was like a group it says unconditionally we stay with we stand with Israel no matter what Israel does it didn't matter didn't matter how horrific, how wrong or what, we stand with them no matter what. So uh, we can certainly understand where you're coming from, but we will come back to you soon. Let's go to uh, Dr. Rosa. And yes. can you tell us about yourself a little bit? I know I'm going to tell the secret. Okay, you are Jewish. All right. So, yes. so uh, and you came to Jesus. So that's wonderful. But tell us first now about your love for Israel. Where were you? How far were you with your love for Israel? How, what, what was you like? What kind of Christian were you? Well, similar to your walk, um, I wasn't that much. Okay. My mom was a Sephardic Jew in her family. Okay. But they were believers in Christ. Mm. Now, but this, but I didn't make a big deal until after I would say I went to Bible school. That's when everything just started to, I became a Zionist. Um, but I didn't know that. The funny part about it is I was raised in New York City and all the teachers were Jewish. All the stores were Jewish. So you're the Yankee. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. And um, it's there okay. were like, my dad's from Long Island. So yeah. It's okay. So we were like the only Hispanics in the whole neighborhood, practically. But the Jewish people were very nice to us. We were very close and they would take care of my brother and sister when they were little. It was a different thing. But my teachers, but I had a problem with my teachers. Mm. They were very prejudiced. And they tried to kind of like, uplift the Jewish kids and downgrade those that were not Jewish. And I had a fight to get a high school diploma. My mom had to go and fight for me because mm. they, even if I passed the test and made good scores, my cousin had the same problem. She wanted to go to medical school in, in uh, city college, sought a pre-med. She was very intelligent. They didn't want to accept her because only Jews went 
to City College and colleges. It was really tough. And well, anyway, so I realized that I found out after my mom was in the nursing home that she said she used to go to the synagogue on Saturday and the Catholic church on Sunday. And I asked her and I said, uh, why? She didn't answer. She wouldn't answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I went uh, to about a 91 with my parents to Israel. Oh, I was so gung ho. Oh, I cried because I was there and all everything just like, oh, God, this is the chosen land. And then in 92 again, I've been to Israel five times. Okay. Okay. The last time was with Paul Begley in 2016. <laughs> okay. So, and I stayed two weeks in the Negev with a friend, two weeks there. And I love the Negev. I, I like the Negev better than I do any other part of Israel. But I was so gung-ho. I mean, it was like, wow, I'm a Sephardic Jew. And it's like, wow, we and all this other stuff. But then, I don't know, but what really happened was after 2016, it was like God was opening me, my eyes. Because you would go to Jerusalem and see all those stones. And they would tell you these are the stones left from the destruction of of the of Jerusalem. Right, right. right. And and I would go over that Matthew 24, and I wouldn't see that Jesus said, not one stone will be left. Mm -hmm. And finally God opened it up and I said, wait a minute, they've been lying to us. Wow. Hey, Rosa, listen, I'll come right back to you uh, on that part, the B part, but I want to talk about what made you kind of, what was the scene? Open up, yeah. Yeah, right. so let me go back to Sister Connie for now. So Sister Connie, um, where do you remember was your first kind of moment when you started to doubt or, or kind of something didn't feel right? Well, definitely you, for, um, but let me tell you what happened to me. I was reading Bible. Uh, it was, I think, the minor prophets, you know, the, okay. I can't remember which one because I was a full-blown Zionist and I read something and I went, whoa, that, that means, that means Israel didn't become a nation in 1948. And I totally backed away and I went, I just like pondered. I thought, whoa. And I, being the Zionist that I was, I just said, okay, dropped it and just walked away from it. But then, you know, uh, being on your, uh, so I think that kind of stirred. It would made it easy when you were talking about Noahide. <laughs> and that made a whole lot of sense and I was I posted your video on Facebook and I had one of my you know longtime Christian friends say you better be careful you know warned me and <laughs> <laughs> so, that would be my next question if you're going through persecution because oh, of your... well even now you know I, if i say anything and i post stuff on there i mean everybody is so they're just hooked they don't did you, did you don't get know. the anti-semitic card uh, yeah, they say it now. I see. Uh, I get this. Um, one person put it like, "I wasn't sure, but now I I know who you are." You know, type of a oh thing. Oh my goodness! And so, a, a yeah. So, but it was for you, uh, really helping me break out. But the Lord started dealing with me to yeah. be. Uh, I would it. love to know what that scripture was. It, I know I tried to back to you. Let, let me know. I'd but, love to know about it. Yeah, when Holy Spirit reveals it back, because that happens to me too. Like sometimes I see something in a scripture and it gets like light comes up and then I forget what it was. Yeah. So yes. being the scientist that I was, I didn't want to believe it, or I did believe it, but I just let it let it rest. I wished I would have did something. But let me tell you one thing. I did my my heritage. 
I did uh, anyway. And I opened it up. I was at work, you know, my results came in and it said, you are 29% Sephardic Jew. Oh, okay. And then, then they did an update and now I am a Mizrazi. Mizrazi. Ms. I am Ms. Rossi, but I can't say it. Uh, and of course, I'm, my other part is Italian, but the rest of it is Middle East. So I am basically Middle East and Italian. And Maybe that's why you felt such love for the Jews, like naturally, you know, like as well. Though. Right. Wow, like that's amazing. Palestinian people. Yes. Well, thank you, Sister Connie. Now let's go back to uh, Sister Rosa here. Well, um, I remember you from time when you were Zionist, because when we were Zionist, you were Zionist, and we, you know, knew each other, and it was just like you were on a fire for Israel. I can, I remember that. And then the change came. So tell us, what I mean, you already started this. You said that it was the scripture about not one stone will be left. And we believe that everything Jesus says is true to the detail, mm -hmm. to the very smallest uh, part of it. So if he said not one stone, it must be not one. How can these stones be from that time, right? Right. So go ahead and tell us about how about your journey. How were you coming out of? Uh, how, what was opening your heart and your eyes? And tell us right. about. That. Well, I've been I've been saved forty years. Okay, 40, 1984. and um, I loved Israel because of my ancestry, but I noticed. It's like slowly but surely after that scripture and then listening to you and I'm saying, wait a minute, they were Zionists and and telling me about the Noahide laws and all this stuff. It was like, you know, I hate to say it, it's like I should have had a V8 or something, you know, all of a sudden <laughs> it exploded. And I said, wait a minute, these not these are not the Jews of old. These, these are not the, and everything just started like my brain was going all different ways. And I said, wait a minute, what am I doing? And I want to say one thing right now. I'm not pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian. I'm pro-life. Yes. I don't like any of this happening. Amen. Amen. Any, as a Christian, I want them to get along and get to know who Yeshua is, their Messiah. Yes. yes. But I noticed too, back in 2009, when I went, the guy that was there was a Christian Jew. He said, don't be fooled. Israel is socialist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I said, what? And he, and he said, yes, it's hit, it hides with democracy. But it's really a socialist society. Yeah, because really... of the kibbutz. Remember the kibbutz. Yes, and he right. lived in he lived in a kibbutz, mm -hmm. and he had a few uh, believers, but they had to walk on eggshells because of being believers. But he said, "Don't be fooled. They are not democracy." And and then I noticed how. I don't know. It was like I went on 2016 and I said, God, I'm not coming back. I just felt like something was wrong. And that's when God started opening up my eyes. And I started to realize everything we learned that was Schofield between, uh, oh, yes, this, uh, uh, you know, what do they say? Um, uh, a, a land is not. What born in a day? How do you say that again? The, the nation uh, was born in one nation, day. Nation, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I and all this stuff and and about the fig tree and about this and about that. And it was like my brain was like the Holy Spirit was telling me, don't be fooled. Right. Don't be fooled. This is really not the Israel of old. And and I said, Wow, Lord. I've been fooled and then listening to you and I'm saying, huh? And I'm saying, I lost all my friends. Oh. I don't have one friend. I we talk, to talk one... about this soon about the persecution. So, oh, so, and you know, I call it persecution. Maybe it's too harsh of a word persecution, but 
you know when you it lose your so. friends when you when people go against you that you used to be your friends and they won't listen i mean we went through it as a ministry everybody yeah. knows we talked about it right we lost all of our ministry friends like we used to be big mm -hmm. friends with brother paul begley Hedy, and you know we miss them as people we miss them like yeah. we had the most amazing time of our lives sister Hedy would be such a kind woman she would they would come to orlando and she brought the most beautiful presents for my children i'll never forget it and for Ariella, she brought this beautiful cat with the longest tail. I don't know if you remember that. I, remember. I mean, she was just the kindest mm -hmm. lady and brother Paul, just just easygoing uh, guy. And we had most wonderful times together. And, you know, we had to make a choice. Yes. Are we going to go with what is um, what what sounds so good in a you know what's what, what is what he said i forgot the word of it he said this is um this is what's going that that's what pays or whatever this is what the well, Paul tr is. trend is that's well, what the trend is right like you need the christians he, to believe Paul said that he told me he said you have a niche he said, yeah. because you are Jewish from your past, you speak the Hebrew language, you understand it biblically, you know, and the fact that you reach the Christian people with the understanding that you have, yeah. there's just no one like that. Right. He he said that this is what's popular. This is what people come to. That's where people gather. That's what they like. That's what they love. So it's almost like it's about entertainment or this is what's go. That's what's popular right now. So we mm -hmm. had to make our own decision, uh, right. you know, by looking at the truth, interpretation of scripture, what's happening in Israel. And we started to find out by U.S.'s liberty. We didn't know. You know I didn't know that either. And may I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. My father liberated a concentration camp wow. during the war. And he said it was horrible. So from there, he started to feel and love the Jews, but he would never talk about it because he said it was horrendous. And and he would tell, then finally one day after he was older, he would tell us the story. But let me say one thing, guys, this, this Zionist thing is a deception. It's a spirit of deception, which the Lord said, possibly the elect will be deceived. This is part of it. Oh, yes. This Very is part point. of it. Yeah. Because let me tell you, my friends, I would tell them the truth. They would blast me and they stopped talking to me. Yeah. But I have, but we have to do what God tells us to do. We can't just go ahead and, and, and accept the falsity of this. This is false. Yeah. And what happens is, the uh, Jewish government is using this as an excuse to continue the falseness of this mm -hmm. so that so that to bring division yeah. in the body of Christ. And we were talking about this on the other other time uh, on our live show. We brought in Dershowitz and we proved to people like Dershowitz was speaking. We brought the video and yeah, he was saw... actually suggesting mm -hmm. that let's the Zionist Christians turn against the, their brothers and sisters who are non-Zionists. Let's make them turn against them. So he's calling for a war within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. so yes. This is what they do. These are their tactics. But anyway, uh, Sister Connie, so I say persecution. I mean, the true persecution is something even more awful, but... Did you lose friends over over your uh, uh, change and they just act? Uh, you know, I don't really i I don't go to a church. I haven't been to church probably forty years, but I don't go. I've tried a few, and it's like I'm not listening to that. But so I don't really have friends. I've lived here for twenty two years in Texas. I don't have any you know, there's nobody like-minded. I, I don't have friends. I, I just go to work and come home. So, uh, but 
um, on Facebook or um, on this other group that I am a part of. And there is another group that I'm a part of that you probably, I know you know very well. And the um, I, I haven't told how my feelings are for that on that group because I know for sure what would happen but you'll um, be excommunicated <laughs> yeah I'm on it because of the information that I get from this person as far as you know what's going on with you know things like this and what the new world right, order. Right. anyway but no uh, uh so I don't really have that many friends to lose I mean no uh, I don't you know but right. would I, you would you lose friends over standing with Christ and his law law yeah. of love and law of life <laughs> I just know that this is a very serious thing because my worship was of Israel and the Jews. Now, I still, it's not the Jewish people. It's no. the, it's the leadership, it, it's the leadership, but it's also the, the idolization of a Jew or Israel. That's it's what the Judaism, that's Talmudic Judaism, that rabbis brainwash their people, that there are special, special kind of people over everybody else. And a lot of Jews just take it as, as you know, they're like a club, like a brotherhood. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and and they brainwashed them in this. So but you're not a part of that, even if you're a a a, a, a Zionist. Yes. You're a yeah. Zionist, you're still not a part of it. You know, I don't believe you you they make you think you are, you know, because you know, let's face it, you know, they get a lot of money from the tourism and uh that's another that doesn't really matter, but you know, that it, it I, they're not, there's not love there for anybody who believes in Jesus Christ. And they probably want that out of a person. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. You well, know, you're how... right. You're absolutely right. What you said, that there is no love there for anyone who believes in Jesus Christ. So that's why it's surprising that a lot of Zionist Christians are on a bridge with the Jews because the Jews hate Christ. I mean, they hate Christ. Mm -hmm. And ultimately they end up going into these messianic movements where they start doubting Christ is even God in flesh. And then they start doubting all of this and then they bring them out into Noahidism. So this is just their way of doing it. But anyway, thank you, Sister Connie. Let's go to Sister Rosa back. Talk, talk a little bit about your persecution with this. I'm sure you have a lot, Rosa. And then we have about, just to let you know, we have about 10 minutes and then we have to finish this program. So go ahead. Well, the persecution is that uh, they don't want to talk to me because they say I'm, I guess they don't tell me that I'm anti-Semitic, but they just tell me that uh, I will be cursed. Oh. You know, the I'll be cursed with a curse. And, you know, they use this thing. Genesis and I, 12, 3. And do you know something? I, even going through Bible school, they, you think it's the Jews. And then you and like what you guys were teaching and it got opened my eyes it has nothing to do it was abraham and it had nothing and i had an argument with one of the zionists one day she said i said to her i don't know why you oh, this about being jewish abraham was not jewish oh she got offended she started oh yes he was he was a jew he was not he was a gentile but he became a Hebrew, which means one who crossed over. That's what it means. And yeah. she was, oh, and then I was telling her that in Jesus's line, Joseph was from the curse line and Mary was from the blessed line of David. And and this is what and she, oh my gosh, no, it was, you can't say anything negative. And I'm saying, okay, you could say negative about Christianity, but you can't say negative about the Jews. And I love the Jews. I love the people. And my heart goes out because I want them to know the Messiah. That's mm -hmm. what, and we, and you know that the majority are secular. Yes. You know, it's like one son can go into Buddhism and it's fine, but don't go into Christianity because we will let you go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is what it is. So I was persecuted. I, and, and 
finally in the church I was teaching, they took away my teaching class and gave it to her, the Zionist. I said, <gasps> okay, that's fine. And everybody loved my teaching and they were complaining about hers, but I said, that's okay. You know, nothing happens without God's permission. Well, so I Rosa, it's time to start your own Zoom meetings and your own teaching. So nobody used can fire to, you. <laughs> I used to on YouTube. I used to, but then the Lord told me to stop it for a while. But um, yeah, uh, and the Zoom that I go to at two o'clock, uh, it's that's our church. And we kind of teach each other and I bring things up and all that stuff. But let me tell you something. The the blindness is not only on Israel, it's on the Zionist. Yeah. They have that blindness. It has been passed down to them. Mm -hmm. And if they only realize the mistake, and I'm glad God got me out of this. And I'm glad God got you out of this to warn the people. Now, when you tell them about the Noahide laws, they laugh. There's something wrong with them. They're fine. Oh, really? Read the sub laws. Yeah. And you will find out what it's all about. Yeah. But anyway, I know they hate Christ because they they spit on the, the priest in, in, in Israel yeah. and they do all kinds of stuff because they hate Christ. And it's not that the people want to be this way, it's that they're taught to be this way yes. by the rabbis. Yeah. And but in reality. All I say is we still continue to pray for Israel, but we pray for the Muslims. But do you realize one thing, and I won't take too much of your time. Do you notice they said that through this Gaza bombing, Jesus has appeared in dreams to the Palestinians. <gasps> Send me that. That would be nice to show people. Yes, it yeah. has been. Yes. How come more Muslims are coming to the Lord than Jews? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're so hungry, but the Jews aren't hungry. They're just satisfied with the way they are. Well, and what's happening is that they, they are being told that the world is going to belong to them. That they are the chosen, yes. they're the light, they're the priestly nation, and all the nations are going to bring them riches, and all the nations will serve them, and they're going to be very special for, for uh, 1,000 years of the Jewish millennium. Yes. So yes. that's what they have been told. And, you know, it's kind of like a club, right? Brotherhood pride. Yeah, you know, we're going to belong to us type of a thing, you know. And tonight, we, we're going to have a live with Steve, by the way. So if you're watching this, please, we're going to have a live where we're going to bring you a recent teaching of a rabbi where you will be shocked what they're teaching you will, you will be shocked so please uh come to the live tonight uh i don't know what time exactly we are doing it maybe like what four or five o'clock p.m um because we are bringing you a lot of new information okay so for the sake of this meeting here just last two minutes maybe for each of you Sister Kani, what's your message to Christians today um, uh, in light of what you know is happening now in Middle East? They are basically genociding Gaza. They just went to Lebanon. Uh, and, you know, there is this Oded Yinon plan, 1982, Great Israeli Project. And it kind of looks that way that they are, that that's what, you know, they're not going to stop because they're on a momentum and they're not going to stop. So, uh, no, man, no matter how many cries for ceasefire, how much, you know, people don't want war, they just seem to always go with the war and seem to get away with it. So what is your message to Christian people? Well, there is a blindness. I think it's more like a spell upon them. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, they, uh, when you hear them saying, kill them all, or... Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do away with it. Let's just finalize it. Get it, go after them. The you know the Palestinians and uh, and I say murder is not right. This is this is wrong. You know you, you can't see that. What you're calling for the murder and the annihilation of group, but they're not. They're Malachites. That's their you know. Yeah, mm. That's the, yeah. That's your subject, Amalekites. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. They're using that 
to as an excuse. Thank you, Sister Connie. Go ahead, Sister Rosa. What, what's your message for the Christians? Well, my my message is to uh, pray, of course, that the Jewish people will get to know the Messiah and the Palestinians. But don't say like Connie was saying, kill them all because you've got blood in your hand on your hands. America has blood on their hands. Those bunker bombs that killed Nasrallah was given by America. And then you wonder why you're having this Helene storm. 64 people have died. What you sow, you're going to reap. Absolutely. And I say, pray, but get yourself out of this Zionism farce where your, your eyes are, uh, are Oh, it's only Israel. It's not the Israel of old. It's not so, about Israel. It's about Christ. The entire right. scripture is about him. It's all right. about him. He is the message. He right. is the and we, of the whole thing. We are the new We are the new Israel. We are the priesthood. We're the light of the world. Paul, uh, Peter said so. And this is what we've got to do. We've got to show Christ to everybody. Christ is not happy with what's going on in the Middle East. He loves the Palestinians as he does the Jews. So yes. this is what I say. Please get away from this and pray. Thank you so much, ladies. How about you, Steve? Give one minute. What, 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 what? I just want to say is I'm going to be doing a special broadcast over on Patreon. And I have very good intel about how... Israel is able to identify where the locations of all these men are. It is no coincidence that Israel is able to kill even uh, America's long, uh, long time villains that they've tried to been tr been trying to track down for years never could. And we're going to reveal what that is uh, through some very good Middle East intel that I have over on our Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'll put it in the comments below. I want to really thank uh, Sister Connie and Sister Rosa for coming on today. Uh, that's a big step uh, to be able to share this type of information with the world and uh, and for people to know. It's, they have no dislike for, it, for the Jewish people, but they love the Jewish people as well as the Palestinians as well. That it should be an equality. And I, I love that one statement about pro-life. I think that was Rosa that made that statement there about pro-life. That is so beautiful because that's what we really are. And if we are pro-life, why has one life got a greater value than another? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be that way. And I'm actually be doing, I'm doing a teaching very soon again too on the blessing and the curse. I have talked about that recently, but I'm going to show how that goes down. That was a blessing and a curse for Abraham. And I've always showed people it's a singular you. Mm -hmm. And then it was passed from him, from him to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob. Why? Why was this being passed down? It was to protect the coming seed. And they were all partakers of that seed. If you went back and followed Jesus's genealogy, you will see that that blessing and curse follows that seed line. So when Christ came, that's where it rested right there. It didn't go any further after him. It ceased with Jesus Christ. You either bless him. Those that bless him are blessed. Those that cursed him are cursed. So the Genesis 12, 3 is about Christ, the seed. Mm. It's not about the Jews right now in Israel. It's not about the country of Israel. It's mm. about Jesus. And we need to, my message to Christians, we need to return to true original Christianity, reinterpret scriptures back to what it was and get away from dispensational theology and Schofieldism and and this is the only way that we can be saved and don't have blood guilt on your hands mm -hmm. on your souls by supporting wars and killing this is awful so anyway thank you so much you are all beautiful ladies we love you thank you it's you're so brave to come here and share your story so whoever wants to we are doing this right now that's our series of inviting just common people or anybody who has a story or a journey no matter how big or small that you came 
out of Zionist Christianity to Christ Jesus as the rock only, you can say your story here on Israeli News Live. Thank you so much. Email me. It is email is Israeli News Live at protonmail.com. If you email me, uh, we will be in contact and we will bring you on. So again, Israeli News Live at protonmail.com. Have a wonderful day. Thank shalom, you. shalom. 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 shalom.